What's up, YouTube? I'm Mike, and this is my lovely wife, Sarah, who I've conned into uh, getting back on camera with me. We just got back from the gym, so we're both looking a little bit rough. Obviously, she's not looking rough. She never looks rough, just me. But uh, what we're going to talk about today is her experience with Anavar. I had we, we sat down like an hour ago to try to record a video about her current HRT protocol, but it's been a disaster that we've tried to shoot three times now, and we're kind of all over the place. So we're going to condense this into a few videos so we can cover all the angles because really where this started was with small amounts of Anavar trying to work on getting her libido into a better range and to keep her a little bit more competitive in the gym. So uh, why don't you start off by explaining uh, a little bit about your, you know, where you were at gym-wise, libido-wise before you used any anabolics of any kind. Um, I was struggling a lot like throughout my adulthood I've done you know I'm in the gym for a couple of months and then I'm out for a year and then I'm in the gym for a couple of months just like a lot of people yeah. but um, I was really struggling to have any consistency in the gym and I was also uh, very underweight so I weighed 112 pounds at 5 feet 9 inches or a little taller and um, I was I was really trying to put on weight which was one of the reasons that I really wanted to be in the gym I was struggling to eat and I was hoping that that would increase my appetite. Also, I had zero libido. Yeah. Like, just none. Yeah. Like, so when she says zero libido, one of the things that's important to point out, we were still having sex seven times a week on average. Um, she might even tell you it was more than that. I've made a number of videos talking about the frequency of sex that's been going on in this house, certainly since I started cycling. But the in the beginning of my cycling, you know, she would only really need sex from a physical perspective, maybe what, two, three times a week? Maximum. Maximum. Probably not. She that. would give it to me as much as I wanted it because she did like the closeness. Yeah. Right. So she she would be looking forward to intimacy on a daily basis. But from her own personal sexual need, it was nearly non existent. Yeah. And so as a man who has a tremendous libido, uh, I think it's pretty universal that we want to feel desired, right? Just like a woman wants to be desired by her man, a man wants to be desired by a woman. And when I got into the gym and I started getting big and getting confidence and becoming more aggressive and I'd be out and about in town, I've had women just stop me in the middle of lows to hit on me or roll the fucking window down. I mean, it's insane. Um, and so all of a sudden I'm getting all of this sexual interest from complete strangers and I'm coming home and it's like, I almost feel like she doesn't even notice me. And so it's like, what the fuck is going on? We, we had some relationship conflicts over that. We tried a lot of different things to try to kickstart the libido. And again, she would give me all the sex that I wanted, but I wanted her to want it too. Um, what was your orgasm response like during that early period where you didn't want it, but we were having it a lot? Uh, I, I typically had at least three, I would say, maybe four each time we had sex. Um, usually a couple of little ones in the beginning and then, you know, your mind-blowing ones later on. But it was almost every night, at least two and sometimes four. Okay, so if you haven't seen the previous video that I did about the fact that she's a squirter, let me just clarify. When she says orgasm, this is not the kind of thing that a woman would easily lie about or fake just to keep a man happy. We're talking about three to four squirting orgasms per sexual encounter. Now, if you've been following along this video, you're probably asking yourself a question. Wait a minute. You have three orgasms every time you have sex, but you only want that two, maybe three times a week? How does that work? I didn't. I didn't want it too. Every time. <laughs> I didn't even want it that much. Like I didn't. I didn't need that. Like I didn't. It, the orgasms were great. I just didn't need them. So, um, as you can imagine, it was very hard for me to understand. It was not something that I was excited about, and so we started looking for different ways of solving that. When she was going to the gym, she struggled to keep up with me, obviously, and she just didn't seem to really care about that either. And so I said, what about Anavar? What if you try a small dose of Anavar? We can, we can see a doctor. I've got a doctor who will write you a script. And let's just run it for a little while. You know, let's give it six weeks and see what you think. She was very nervous about this in the beginning. She'd never taken hormones of any kind. She, you know, 
scared of all, you know, it's going to turn into a man, it's going to cause all these fucking problems, and with tons of research online, I assured her that five milligrams would be a safe dose, and so that's what we started with, and you ran that for six weeks the first time. Yeah. So what was your experience of Anavar during that first couple of weeks? Um, the Anavar just gave me all the stamina in the world at the gym. Like, I just loved it. It was... How long do you feel like it took you to start feeling it? Mm, um, no more than a couple of days. Yeah. Like maybe, maybe two days before I was like, and then it was within three days I was setting PRs in the gym like crazy. Now, do you feel the Anavar acutely like I do when I take it? So you don't have so much the speedy rush. You don't notice it psychologically in the same way that I do. No. But you started seeing it in your performance in the gym. Right. So within three days of starting on Anavar, five milligrams a day was her starting dose. We were breaking that up into three, two. three, oh, two doses. So two and a half milligrams in the morning, two and a half milligrams in the evening, uh, which is a pain in the ass to crush these pills and weigh it all out. But that's what she started with. And how was your strength in the beginning? Uh, before I started the Anavar, I was very weak. I mean, I, I just have never, you know, trained a ton. And I had been out of the gym for a while when um, I had first started the Anavar. Um, I went, I was, remember that we were doing the leg press and I was trying to press the sled, which was 50 pounds. So that's where I started. And then uh, the, the strength was just like exponential. It was crazy. And the, sta and the stamina. So instead of being like, oh, it's been 45 minutes, I'm, you know, ready to go home like I'm just dragging ass you know trying to keep up or wait find things to do while you're working out forever and then with the Anavar I mean in the first couple of days it was like oh no is it already time to go like I wanted to stay at the gym I had so much energy and the, the strength gains were exciting and the the uh this just the stamina I just wasn't dying in there yeah so right away, I mean, out the gate, within the first week, she's starting to see that the, 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 the compound is working in her system. She's coming to me, showing me her PRs. She's able to keep up because, of course, I'm on cycle two. I'm pretty sure I was probably on fucking trend at the time. So I'm blowing and going for two hours straight. And all of a sudden, she's not sitting. She used to do her routine and she'd go sit at the front door and just wait for me, you know, which is, you know, it's cool. But then I kind of feel rushed. And so it was really great being able to watch her start to enjoy something that is a passion of mine. So now I'm not dragging her ass to the gym. She's excited to go. She's going in there. She's got her lift log. She's logging all of her lifts. And so you started out at try, struggling with the sled. Yeah. Sled weighs 50 pounds on the leg press. By the end of your second Anavar cycle, so she ran a six week, took a little time off, and then ran an eight week. Both of those cycles were five milligrams a day. By the end of the second cycle, where was your leg press? 715 pounds. 715 pounds. She went from 50 to 750 over the course of two cycles totaling, what is that, 14 weeks? Something like that. With a break in the middle. Now, admittedly, she was not at her genetic potential. A lot of people will tell you, oh, you shouldn't do fucking steroids until you've been training for eight years and your diet's on point and your fucking sleep is on point. All of these things are on point. And there's some, there's some merits to that, okay? There's, there's nothing wrong with going that route. But if you're not going to the gym at all, if you can't get, get yourself to stay on any kind of schedule for more than three weeks, then maybe you need a little help. What's the worst that's going to come from this? So all of a sudden, she goes from a person who doesn't care to go to the gym, who can't continue to count her calories. She couldn't stay on her meal prep. She couldn't stay on her gym protocol. She was always fucking it off. And now she starts the Anavar cycle, and bam, she's in there every single day with me. She's counting her calories. She's eating her fucking meals, and she starts to see the growth. So what, did you, what was your experience of the aesthetic? Like, how did your body change from vis visual um, perspective. So I've always been lean. I've always been really, really lean, but I never had any muscular definition in my life and playing sports as a kid and, you know, as a young person and, you know, dance and all that and never any muscular definition. And then with the Anavar, just within a couple of weeks, I started to see some definition. The abs was the first thing that was yeah. like, 
I've never had abs ever. Yeah. No matter how thin I was, I've never had abs. And so um, it was the abs, and then I started to see the definition of my back a little bit. I remember the first time a guy at the gym, one of your friends at the gym, came up and was like, "I see the progress in your back," and I was like, you know, that was like maybe three or four weeks in, and it was really exciting. Other people at the gym were starting to notice, and, and that feels good. Yeah, it's, it's motivating. Good. So that's the thing, you know. We, and the and the scale was going up. Right. So yeah, you start gaining weight. Yeah. So where you said your weight was at 112 pounds prior to starting the Anabar. Mm -hmm. And what do you weigh currently today? This morning I weighed 138. 138. So she was 112 pounds of lean. Okay, no abs, but very, very, very she was underweight for her for her body, uh, for her height. Now she's at 138 pounds. And she's got four pack abs just walking across the floor. Like she didn't have to flex them. They're just boom, they're there. I've been taking lots of pictures of her recently. You can see her abs very easily. And so of course now we're, we're ways down the road. But one of the things I also want to say about that is again, to the point that people make that you need to have this, this history of training before you use something like this, she was not able to maintain any kind of consistent training until she was able to see gains happening rapidly enough to keep her engaged. That's one of the things that's very difficult for a woman. A guy can start lifting weights. A skinny guy jumps in the gym. In three months' time, he's seeing some fucking changes. Just like that for a male, we're going to start seeing our bodies change. It does not work that way for the ladies. She, the, the amount of total muscle she's going to build in a lifetime I probably built in the first year of training. So I was able to see my body change in a very rapid way without steroids and that keeps you coming back. And so when she got on the anabolics and was able to see some of those changes in real time, that made it easier for her to continue to invest this time. If you're struggling to get your girl in the gym, you got to understand how would you feel if you're in the gym four or five days a week, you're fucking killing yourself, you're lifting heavy, you're getting sweaty, you're, you're eating all this food you don't want to eat, you got kids running around, she's trying to be a mom in the meantime, she keeps looking in the mirror and she's not seeing anything. These minor, tiny little fucking changes, she work out for three months and see nothing. She hops on an Anivar cycle and then all of a sudden, boom, strength is going through the roof. Week after week after week, new PRs. PR, she's coming to show me her lift log. She's excited. She starts to see her body changing the mirror. People are walking up to her on the street or in the gym saying, man, you're looking great. I see your back. I see your shoulders. That keeps you coming back for more. And I think that's worth the price of admission. Um, I think something else that's important uh, is my in my journey, I'm too thin trying to put on weight and rather than the reverse. And so when I would, a lot of times I would get in the gym and I would immediately start losing weight. And so here I am trying to put it on and I would lose it because as soon as that, you know, I'm hitting the cardio or, or even a little bit of weight training that I had done before and, you know, I'm doing all the classes or whatever at the gym and, and then I, the weight just falls off. I can't keep right. it on. So I'm trying to put on weight and the Anabar helped me do that. Right. So you saw massive strength and gain, strength gains. What about the negatives? So you had, you had better recovery, better endurance, your strength went through the roof and you watched your body change from a muscular perspective. Your abs started showing, shoulders, all of that. Those things are all great. What were your negatives that you experienced on the five milligram, even up to the 10 milligram dosage? Um, on the five milligrams, I started to have some hair growth, some un unwanted hair growth. Um, like what does that mean? Like where? Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Do you have a mustache? I don't have a mustache, okay. but I do so have, like, I never had dark hairs at all anywhere. And now, you know, and then with the five milligrams, I started to have a few here and there. Okay, but you're not growing a beard. No. Right. No, but, I, but I'm just definitely having sure. some more hair growth than I had previously. And um, then I, I was having, mm, I'm trying to remember now. Oh. I was just listening, listening yeah. to my mind. So one of the things I can tell you while she's thinking, oh. go ahead. I, I had one of the negatives was the um, my voice seemed to be changing a little bit, especially on the higher dose, um, getting a little bit raspier, and I'm not 100% sure if I'm 
if that's real or not, but it yeah. seems to be. So I made another video, I can't remember if I referenced it in the beginning, there, there was also a little stint where we tried to test some testosterone and uh, I believe that was the cause of the minor voice change. We've asked quite a number of people who, who know us personally if they feel like her voice has changed over time. We even looked at some old YouTube videos that she made. And if, the, if there is a voice change, it's very, very minor. We're, we're not talking about a massive difference in voice, but whether it was the testosterone or the Anivar, there's definitely been some minor change. Um, what about psychologically, how did you feel? Um, I definitely suffer from Varbot. And so uh, some just reduced emotional ability, like. So one of the things that we struggle with a lot, again, I, we've tried, we shot so many videos tonight, it's hard for me to remember what we said and what we haven't said. She suffers from PMDD, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder quite severely. Some girls have PMS. Um, PMDD is like PMS on roid rage. It's horrifically terrible. And so uh, during that period of time, she sort of checks out mentally and emotionally. We experienced a little exacerbation of that at the early periods of the Anivar. She typically does not notice it. I usually come to her and I'm like, hey, I'm like, what the fuck's going on? You're distant. Are you mad at me? Is something going on? She assures me that there's nothing. And so then I know that it, it's, it's being caused by the Anivar. It seems to come on within the first seven days. And it's the most acute from around day seven to day 14 to 21 max. I feel like as the cycle extends, either she gets used to it and overcomes it, or maybe I get used to it and don't notice as much, but I really think it subsides over time. Um, in general, she's still very lovely to be around. Um, how do you think it affects your aggression on the road? I'm definitely more <laughs> aggressive. So I'm, I've always been, a little, I'm always an aggressive driver, I think. But um, previously, I could give some grace. I used to always say, well, maybe they have pies in their front seat. I used to say that all the time. So try not to get too angry because maybe they're driving around with pies in their, seat, in their front seat. And then um, on the Anivar, I don't give a fuck what's in their front seat. <laughs> like, I'm just very, I'm very aggressive. I'm much more likely to get out of my car or to start some shit with... So it definitely has tuned up her aggressiveness. And the weird thing is it's never directed at me. That's the crazy thing. Like, I don't ever feel like she's snapping on me. But she's called me when she was fucking hanging out the window of a car. And I'm like, God damn, she can get herself shot. So definitely some aggression. Um, go ahead. And then I had uh, my orgasms. It became harder to orgasm. So I did orgasm. But instead of like two, three, four times a night, it was just once a night. See, so again, I can't remember if we talked about this, that, that in this video or not. Oh. Um, so uh, we'll save the orgasms for a different video because I think we, we, we mentioned that earlier. Uh, so one of the other things, she, she usually would, would have two or three, sometimes four squirting orgasms during a particular sexual event. I made an entire video on my channel about the fact that she's a squirter. If you have not seen that video, you're missing out. You should definitely go check it out. Um, when she started the Anivar at five milligrams, it seemed to negatively affect her, her orgasm response, which was shocking to me because I've read a number of reports on Reddit and other sources that Anivar makes a lot of women excessively horny. One girl reported that she felt like it was literally turning into a whore, that she was, she was engaging in risky sexual behavior that was totally uncharacteristic for her. Thankfully, we've not seen any of that. Um, but again, she started at a relatively low dose. So at five milligrams a, a, a day, we were not seeing much in the way of an increased libido or any kind of orgasm response. She did have minor, and I mean very minor growth in the clitoral area. Um, it extended slightly, but nothing like you may have seen horror stories on various different sources online. We're talking about a very minor change. I noticed it because I spend a lot of time down there, but it I was, did not notice it. It's very, very minor. Um, so, um, and that seemed to go away too after. Yeah. When she would come off, it would subside and then she would go back on and it would flare up again. And so she, like I said, she's, she's run multiple cycles. So she ran two, five milligram cycles, a seven and a half milligram cycle, and she is currently running 10 milligrams of Anivar a day. What would you say the worst side effect of the Anivar has been for you? The acne. The acne. 
So she definitely struggles with acne. If this camera's picking it up, you can probably see it in her face here and here. And when I edit the photos that I've been taking of her recently, it's like connect dots on that back. So she definitely has, uh, a, 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 it definitely exacerbates her acne. So ladies, if you were considering using this and you're prone to acne, there's a very likely chance that it's going to exacerbate that. And I was not prone to acne. I didn't, I've never in my life had very much acne. I did some when I was pregnant and I always did around, just around my period, like a little bit of acne around my period. But the, the acne that I have with the Anivar is, is a lot and it's cystic and painful. It's miserable. Yeah. So it's very weird occurrence how this affects people. I had horrific acne as a child that subsided in my early 20s and now at 41 I have run cycles with Test, Trend, Masteron, Anivar, all kinds of shit. Doses creeping up towards 2,000 or more nanograms, I mean uh, 2,000 or more milligrams per week of anabolics and no matter what compound I use and what dosage I use, I will get an occasional extra large uh, zit but it, 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 I get next to no acne from anabolics. Some people, it absolutely devastates them. She has a relatively um, bad case of it. It's not by far the worst I've ever seen, but it, 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 the longer she's on cycle, the, the worse it gets. Now, again, we're going to make another video about her current total HRT protocol, but I wanted to leave a teaser here because we're going to wrap this one up. Currently, she is taking 10 milligrams of Anivar per day, 7 milligrams of Test E per week, and uh, 3 milligrams of Estradiol every month. Now she takes that 3 milligrams in 4 doses, 1 per week, to keep nice and stable uh, blood concentration. So I also take the testosterone split into 2 a week. Yeah, so she takes 1 E2 shot per week, two, 2 testosterone shots per week, and 10 milligrams of Anivar, all of which we have found a doctor to prescribe. Now, it's outrageously expensive going that route, but she feels much more comfortable having a script in hand for all of the legal reasons that you can imagine. Um, so yeah, so overall, what, ha what, what is your experience of using, again, right now we're just talking about the Anivar, what, what is your, how would you rate this compound as far as what it's purported to provide and what you feel like it provides for you? I think it gave me everything that I was expecting with the exception of the the weirdo orgasm orgasm response but i feel like it's the strength the stamina the the uh aesthetic like it's exactly what i thought it, what i thought it would do and what i wanted it to do so the final thing i want to say in this video is what she just mentioned the aesthetic people often will tell you that steroids are not addictive and they are 100 percent accurate if you're using the term addictive in the way that you would apply it to, for example, cocaine or street drug. You're not ever going to be like fucking fiending for your next steroid shot. Steroids can be very addictive though because they will produce a look in your body that you cannot get otherwise. So for example, when she was 112 pounds, extremely lean, she still had no visible abs. She jumps on Anivar and within a couple of weeks the abs start coming in. It makes you tighter and harder. Your skin seems thinner. Her muscles are fuller and more dense. And you just look very, very athletic on a compound like that. For me, it's Trenbolone. Like, I never want to come off Trend because the vascularity and the hardness and the striations and the muscles and the fullness, that subsides when the compound leaves your system. And so she has expressed to me in her off periods, like she starts noticing she doesn't look the same as she did on the Anivar. And um, there's really no, no, nothing you can do about it. It's something that you have to accept. And it's why we're talking about having her cruise on smaller doses rather than come completely off. But we'll save that for the next video when we go into her HRT protocol in its totality. I know there's been several of you who have been asking for that. We tried to get it down today and we've just spent too much time on this video to, to, to do it. So hopefully I can get that video out to you guys tomorrow. Anything you'd like to say in closing? So there you have it. 
One thing that's very important for me to, to remind you of, I am and Sarah is not, are not, however you say that, endorsing the use of anabolics. We are not promoting this. I am not telling you what you should do. I am only telling you what we have done under the advisement of doctors with legal prescriptions, as it pertains to her anyway. And so uh, this is not medical advice. Um, you guys have to make your own decisions in life. Find a doctor who can monitor your health and make sure that you get good, um, clean drugs. Because ladies, it is very, very dangerous for you to go the, un the aftermarket, uh, what am I saying, uh, underground lab route. If I take something that's supposed to be Anivar and turns out to be D-Ball, no big deal. If she takes D-Ball, she's going to have massive fucking problems in very short order. So please be very careful about who you get your products from. Try to get them from a doctor if at all possible. Hopefully this episode has been informative and we'll see you on the next one. I lost my trigger.